Welcome to Business Conversations with your host, business strategist, Clive Ennevar. Clive is joined by expert guests as they talk business behind the scenes to give you the tools and insights to support your growth, security, and serenity as you strive for your success. Welcome to another episode of Business Conversations with Clive Enever. I am Clive Enever, business strategist, and we're having a conversation with Ichko Batman about entrepreneurship, mindset, and online coaching. Ichko is an IPEX certified professional coach and energy leadership index master practitioner. She is a life purpose and mindset coach on a mission to help others to find their voice discover their self-worth, and unleash their full potential and gifts to take actions aligned with their passion and purpose. Hello, Ichiko, and welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. And a large part of that pleasure is because I want to find out where Ichiko comes from, why is she doing what she's doing, and I know all of our listeners are going, why is he calling her Ichiko? Well, that's because it's her name. Now, Ichiko, tell us, where does Ichiko come from? Absolutely, yeah. So thank you for the question. Uh, well, I am, I'm based in California, in America, but I'm from Mongolia. So I grew up in Mongolia. I moved to America almost around seven years ago. And uh, yeah, so I became an entrepreneur just two, over two years ago. Beforehand, I was an accountant going pursuing CPA, but I just really couldn't see myself doing it rest of my life. And I just didn't think that that was my passion and purpose in my life. And I wanted to explore, but I just didn't even know what to do or how to, how to find that passion and purpose for a long time. And that time I got depressed and, you know, very stuck in my life. And I just didn't know what to do with it. And until I embarked upon a journey of self-discovery, that's when I learned about myself, who I am. And also like um, found my passion and purpose. That's, that which is a coaching life coaching so now i'm on a mission to helping others especially asians and immigrants and also millennials to helping them to live the life they dream really helping them to find their self-worth and um also finding their passion and purpose in their life so yeah and that's when uh, my entrepreneurial journey started <laughs> excellent now for those of us who are geographically challenged, help us out with where is Mongolia? It's Isn't that sort of wedged between a couple of very large state, country states? 100%, yes, yes. Um, well, Mongolia is located between China and Russia, two big, big countries. So um, Mongolia itself, like it's a, such a big country, but as far as population goes, it's only 3 million. Um, so I'm just one of them and living in America right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Mongolia being wedged between those two places uh, is, well, it's sort of got left behind a bit the way the rest of the world has taken hold of technology and grown in all sorts of areas. Mongolia has been left behind a bit, hasn't it? Yes, I, uh, I'm i with you on there. And literally, it's still in a way like a third world country. We are still like the developing country. So everything is literally behind. And we have a, even a joke too, like um, every fashion model, mod, mod uh, uh, ends with Mongolia. So even this pandemic literally uh, ends with Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like a joke, okay? But like um during this pandemic time, Mongolia like hasn't even affected at all and when it, it and when it's about to end, that's when Mongolia is getting like exposed so much. <laughs> so it's just so hilarious, but yeah, it's um but I will say this, like uh I left Mongolia like 7 years ago. It has grown and has developed so much but i mean as far as technology goes it's still in a way we are really behind yeah 
So for you moving from Mongolia to the United States, yeah. that must have been uh, a bit of an eye-opener to see the change, not not the least being, okay, if, if Mongolia is a total population of about 3 million, mm-hmm. uh, doesn't America have uh, somewhere around about 350 million? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Literally, this, uh, the Orange County where I live is only 3 million people already. So, and L.A., the city itself it's three million people so yeah it's it's uh, yeah <laughs> yep it's a very quite... different uh, place and of course with increased population seems to come uh increased speed of life have you noticed a big change there i yeah i have yeah i mean goodness is i was i was an adult at the time so um <clears throat> the the life itself was really different than what I have seen, what I grew up, 100%. The fact that Mongolia itself is like kind of, um, again, in a way, it's again, developing country. So we don't have what America has, 100%. So uh, I was even still like very behind all the things. And on top of that, I learned English here. So I worked so hard to everything, like catch up with everything else. So, um, but I mean, like, it's 100% worth it. So um, I'm, I'm happy <laughs> with what I did. And, and of course, with uh, such a huge change from uh, an Asian country to the United States, there's this thing called culture. What did you notice most about the difference in the culture between the two nations? Yeah, I love that question. Yeah. <clears throat> One thing I noticed um, was I think the people here are such a friendly than uh, over there. Um, I really feel like, you know, they're like, it's it's great. Like, everyone's hustling, you know. Here it's in a way a little relaxed, but at the same time, the people are very friendly is what I found. Um Yeah, gosh, it's been a while, so I couldn't, like, think anything else. You, you've already become a, an American. <laughs> I know, yeah. Like, you know, even, like, I don't even speak Mongolian anymore because, like, um, I just choose not to, you know. I become, like, I'm Americanized really much, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's well interesting, Yeah. <laughs> Well done on you for having such a huge culture change and adapting so well. Part of that, of course, as you said, you there you are. You've studied hard to to be an accountant, and all of a sudden you look in the mirror one day and you say, "I don't think I'm looking at me." What happened there? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And also, I will say this, I have also, in a, I lived in a different cities in America, too. I was in the first city was I was in Seattle. And then I lived there of, uh, over a year and a half. And then I moved to San Francisco. And then I was in LA. And then now in, I'm in Orange County, you know, so I was like, literally all over the place. I was, I was like, always discovering and trying to find something that, like, I can call it a home. So I couldn't really find a home until I arrive at here so i think like i like to say i'm like very nomad person because like you know mongolians we are like that we are so much like that so like people surprise how much i travel or how much i moved around um to me it wasn't such a big of a deal for me like i'm like okay like i don't like here like i i, I need to get out of here <laughs> and i i did and it wasn't hard yeah it was hard but people look at it as oh my gosh how did you even do all, all everything all alone but in, in my mind it was like <clears throat> like all i knew is that in the mind in my mind it's like i just couldn't stay here like, i have to get out of here that was like literally in, in my mind yeah and this is the thing like i do not give up i'm always kind of looking for the things that i truly wanted you know i really believe especially america represents opportunity and freedom and um not every place is well, you know, you can find that, do you? But you have to really go after for where you want it and really look for it. And I really, truly, deep inside, deep down, I really believe that exists. 
and it wasn't that easy really to find it, but it's worth to look for it. Yeah. Which brings us to the role you have now as a, a professional coach and energy leadership index master. <laughs> Knowing what's going on in in uh, our own mind is for some of us rather difficult. How were you able so clearly to see I'm not in the right place. I'm not sure where the right place is, but there's something over there that's more attractive to me now than where I am. How did you go through the process of identifying all of that? Um, I'm sorry, can you rephrase your question? How did I go through what this, throughout this pandemic? Do you mean by this? Or? No, no, no. How, how did you come to the realisation that you weren't yet in the right place and, and there, then you spotted another place. So you started out in Seattle, then you went to San Francisco. Something about San Francisco was more attractive than um, where you Seattle. were. How did you figure all of that out to make the right moves? Mm, yeah, great question. Um, so... While I was living in Seattle, one thing I noticed is like rains almost every day. Um, and then again, like you know, I'm a, like a very much country girl. Okay, like I grew up in a little almost like a countryside girl, like in Mongolia. So like in my mind, I was thinking like I didn't think that America is all about rain. <laughs> that's not what I see. Like, and then that's when I literally did the research. Um, and then uh, when I did that, when, while I was doing the research, also like I was kind of connecting to some Mongolians or online on Facebook. And then from there, I connected to a few girls in San Francisco. Because like I'm kind of, I guess, what I was trying to do is I was trying to find someone who I can connect and, you know, so looking for my tribe per se. Uh, and then I found a few girls, but again, I do, I just really don't know them, like, in per, like you know, but they're Mongolian. So I'm hoping they're going to be nice to me or at least they can welcome me, right? So <laughs> that was my attitude in the beginning. And I did um, find a very nice family, Mongolian family, and then uh, that happened to be in San Francisco. Um, not knowing that, you know, San Francisco is all about technology and also, also like, but I know that California itself, it, itself is like, um, still like kind of warm weather, you know, it, no rain. It's like almost like, you know, sunshine almost every day. So, um, that's when I found San Francisco, but it was so nice. I love the city, you know, beautiful. And the people are not that I imagined they, should, you know, they would be, but um, you know, I readjusted it. It was it was a lot of uh, learning curve and a lot of transition, and that's when I started going to also like school too. Like I was taking a bunch of uh, finance classes, economic classes, but I still at the time I didn't really know what I truly wanted. But like I was, you know, that's kind of like what I can do, like you know, as far as anything else. Um, yeah, so that's how I ended up uh, going to San Francisco. And funny thing is, uh, when I was in San Francisco, so I had a friend. Uh, I visited to L.A. one time to see my friend. That's when I discovered about L.A. Oh, my gosh. This is what I was looking for. <laughs> what am I doing in San Francisco? Because it's like some LA is like the you know the where the magic is. It's beautiful, you know, yeah, the barrel hills and everything else. But um, and I didn't move right away, obviously. But I moved to LA a year later after I discovered, yeah. And at some stage, of course, you've arrived at this point where doing accounting is not for me. I need to do something else. Yeah. What was it that inspired you to get into coaching? Yeah, good question. So, <clears throat> like I mentioned earlier, so I was like for a while, like at least six or more than six months, like I was just really stuck and feeling so lost. And I was hoping someone could help me. I was hoping, praying for like, oh my gosh, God, like, what do I do? Like, I, I, like, I just don't want to do this, but I, you know, I don't want to be staying in the funk, you know? <laughs> and um, 
until I found a, I met a friend who is just an amazing girl and um she invited me to into this like a workshop it's all about like again soft discovery so that's when I kind of discovered about like kind of learned about myself who I am truly uh, because like I wasn't really connected to myself like I was kind of doing everything making a decision from my mind all the time and there's something is missing and I just don't know or couldn't you know have to go going into my heart and this training really helped me to tap into my heart really listen to myself on a deeper level and from there uh, throughout the journey it was like a six months of journey and uh, we had also coaches there too the coaches really always you know, hold me, like, hold us high all the time, just so amazing, supportive, like, you know, um, when I really couldn't even believe in myself, the coaches really believed in me, hey, like, I'm an immigrant, I'm an Asian girl, like, I just don't, I could not think that I could do this coaching, you know what I mean, it's just to me, like, no way, you know, so, but um, that's when I, that was like the, you know, my coach really planted the seed for me really well for six months. But um, I was also still going to the uh, training and everything else. And um, yeah, that's really when I, then I, I figured that I actually need a coaching certificate. I don't want to be just coach people just because I, I can call myself coach. That's too silly. And that's when I also like, you know, discovered and did the research about it. And then that's when I get into coaching um school also yeah now you mentioned in there something i think is really really important that you were trying to make decisions from your head and you were having difficulty aligning with your true self in your heart how can a person make that leap from head to heart and a second one follow-up question for that What's the real difference in making decisions from your heart, not your head? Yeah, I love that question. So um, I think, you know, oftentimes we are so disconnected from like our heart and we just really like, you know, we always do things because we have to be smart. We have to do, you know, do the task, you know, almost every day and doing the job. So it's no wonder all of us are in our head all the time to make a decision, right? So, and for me, for a while, I was so disconnected. Um, so what I was, were like, throughout the journey, what I was doing is, like, I literally, like, journal a lot and have this prompt. I mean, in the training, we have prompt, ask that. And every day in, in the beginning, I just, I couldn't even know how to answer this question. Like, it was so weird for me. I, like, dude, what, what is this, you know? It was just so weird for me. But, like, more I tap into it, I'm, like, I was more listening to myself even more because like in the beginning I was still in my head, you know, trying to make a decision, like, you know, from my mind. Uh, and then really, and the more, more I do it, like I really listen to myself, like, what am I thinking? How am I feeling? Like, you know, and then journal that and really let it out and then express it out loud. And that's really also helps a lot as well. So, and from there, I like listen to myself and it was just so amazing um, that's really, I think that any human being can find what they truly also wanted to, because otherwise you could do something else and you're feeling like disconnected. You're feeling like there's something is missing in your life. You just don't even know what that is. Because often what we're doing is we just don't even know how to tap into our heart. So the, the little practice would be really just go with yourself and journal it, let it out and everything. Like we are now, we, we say this, we're like, Taught down love, right? So you kind of put everything in your mind and really let it out and write it out. So that's kind of how you can tap it into your heart. Um, so what was the second question? Sorry. <laughs> I really get like what's excited the about difference? this stuff. I'm what's, sorry? what's the major difference in the quality or type of decisions a person makes when they're made from the heart rather than from the mind? Yeah, um, I think at the end of the day, I mean, um, it also boils down to what you really, truly want in your life, right? Um, I think, you know, you can make decisions all the time and be successful or, you know, or be rich. 
and but oftentimes what we truly want is like that's in our heart uh we just don't even know that yet um so that's why like you know the difference between is like you can get everything you want out of you know using your brain because our brain is so amazing it has so much potential it can like blow your mind you know it can blow your mind anyone's mind we can use that and we can get whatever we wanted and it's possible but oftentimes what we truly truly want is that's in our our heart right like the love the passion the desire is actually stay or stay in your heart so that's the thing that's the difference between that two and yeah so you use words there like passion and love. Now, it sounds to me like that if we're making decisions based on our values, they're going to talk to that passion and that love and, and whatever else is what we value, that we're making a decision for our whole self, which probably means we're making decisions which benefit our community, however small or large. Is that how it works? Can you, I'm sorry, rephrase that your question, please? <laughs> when we make decisions from our heart, does that mean that those decisions are generally better for us and for our community? 100%. Um, it's only better for you to really, if you know, if you know, it's. I think, you know, the decision when you make, if you want to make a decision from your heart is basically you, you know, you have this heart, you have this compassion, you have this, uh, passion you know so that's when you like want to make a decision from there right like for example if you're in the service industry i think you want to make a decision from your heart but i think as far as business goes i think it's you know you the, your mind is such an important tool you want to use it you know you need a strategy right you need everything else too uh, but I think it depends, like, where are you in your life, what do you truly want, and how you want to make a decision. I think that's very important. For me, I can use it both, right? I think you have to balance it at the same time. But when it comes to, like, finding your passion and purpose or you really want to listen to yourself, right? And then when you implement it, that's when you use your mind. Um, yeah. Did I answer your question? I think you did pretty well. The... <laughs> Now, each of us, of course, works better if we have a mission or some high ideal that we're striving for. What's your mission? And as a result of that, what legacy do you want to leave? I love this question. Uh, it's literally my favorite question, yeah. For me, my mission is to helping as many, especially Asians, especially immigrants who have struggled with for a long time and who lost their voice, uh, really, I want to help them to raise their voice. And you do matter. You have a voice and you can live the life you dreamed of. And it's possible for anyone. And for me, I want to help as many as women to live the life they dreamed of. Thousands or millions of women. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, I, look, this is a, a subject uh, very close to my heart to you know, help people understand how to communicate better with each other. But time is against us, uh, Ichiko. But before I let you go, I've got some other questions for you. What is the best tip you have received from a business conversation? Business conversation. I love this question. Um, I think, uh, like, I love when, you know, you talk about this decision-making. I think it's very, very also important. Like, even when you're in a business, you have to also, when you make a decision, you also have to trust yourself and make a decision. Because there's also, by the way, like, there's no right or wrong way of doing any sort of business. I think we, in our mind also, like, we have an idea there is, a, like, a, a certain way of doing business. Actually, it's it doesn't really exist. We just have to know that. And I just want to let letting you know you, like, letting you know that there's really no right or wrong way, really listen to yourself and trust yourself and make a decision it doesn't matter even if you make a uh, make a mistake because guess what 
instead of trying to make you trying to figure out everything else and time really flies right you just want to make decision trust yourself make decision and move forward with your life and you learn along the way i think that's the best if i would give it to anyone how can our listeners connect with you to start their own business conversation Absolutely yes. So um, I'm you. I love hanging out on social media. My jam is Instagram, and I do use LinkedIn and Facebook as well. I'm still active on there, but my main jam is like on Instagram. So if you can go anywhere, if you can type my name, you can find me. It's Ichko at Ichko Batmung, um, and that's on my Instagram. Even on my website called Ichko dot uh, Ichko Batmung dot com. And everything else, LinkedIn, Ichkabatwong, Facebook, Ichkabatwong. So you can find me anywhere, any social media. And Ichko Batman is is spelled. Ichko is I C H K O, yes. and Batman is B A T. So B for Bob, A T, M for Mary, U N for Nelly, K H. Yes. Ichko Batman and IchkoBatman.com will find uh, Ichko. And, of course, as she said, if you get out there on Instagram or any of the other social medias, you will find her out there. And there she is, uh, perfectly primed, ready to help you find all of your self-worth and uh, get those gifts that you have out there into the world. HK, this has been a great conversation. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. It's been really fun. Thanks for listening to another episode of Business Conversations with Clive Enova. Make sure you subscribe to future episodes via your favourite podcast app and you can find more business resources at cliveenova.com.au.